Hi, thanks for joining me today. In this video, I'd like to take you through a new control found in NetAdvantage 2010 Volume 1 called the Web Tab. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Um, this is a, a new tab control for us that uh, is written in order to, to really pay attention and um, to really implement web standards well. So some of the functionality that you'll see is that I've got a number of tabs here. First of all, within tab one, I have some content that's found directly in the page. With tab two, I have it mapped over to take some information out of a user control. Tab three, I have it configured to look at a specific URL. And so there's the Infragistics community site. I can come through and add new tabs to the collection. And in fact, I can even drag them around and reorder them on the client. Now, it's something that's important to keep in mind is that I'm rewarding them on the client um, and it's not something that's persisted back on the server automatically, although you could do that if you want to. Now, something else you might notice is that I can come through and delete these tabs, but I've set up tab number two uh, to not have the delete button, so I can have full control over whether or not uh, that has that as well. And finally, you'll notice I added in a custom glyph in the, the side here of the tab and so out of the box, it doesn't come with those images, but I just made those quickly to put in there to show as an example for you. So let's head on over to Visual Studio and I'll show you how this is all coming together. So back in Visual Studio 2008, I have a blank ASPX page. I'll come over to my toolbox and drag a web tab onto the page. Now you notice I have the required script manager already here, and so that kind of gives us everything that we need in order to start off. Now, some of the, the global settings that I'll set here is I want to enable the close button, enable add new tab capability, and finally, I want to enable moving on the client. And so by checking those check boxes, I automatically have that behavior available to me. So once we've done that, let's, um, let's go into the markup and start customizing this just a little bit. What I like to do is remove these tabs here, and I'll put in the markup for the tabs that we were working with in the demo. So here's the updated markup, and starting from the top, you can see that I've just set it to, uh, to turn off view state because I really don't need view state for these tabs right now. And I'd suggest you do that by default unless you have a really good reason to have view state turned on for the tabs. I just have it at 90% width and 200 uh, pixels high. And then I have the first content tab item here. Now, I can set an image URL, which is uh, basically just to my images folder, and I just created the one, two, and three images. So it's very simple to set uh, an icon or some sort of image that you want to show up within the tab. The text is, is pretty easy. That can be anything. That's what the user will often click on. And then down in here within the template, I just can put any markup that I want. This could be any type of HTML. So this really opens it up wide for you to be able to do just about anything that you need within a tab. Now, probably an uh, even better way to handle this is allow the tab to do the, the tabbing, but perhaps uh, it's even better to en encapsulate your functionality within a user control. And so if you want to point to a user control, all you simply need to do is give it a user control URL. It will go into the user control and, and render the control as normal and then take that HTML and place it within the tab. And so that, that's probably a better way to handle this just because that way you don't have a number of different things going on within a single tab control and that could get kind of confusing. So breaking it up is kind of a good thing. Finally, if, if you want to have a tab item and all you want to do is just point to a URL, let's say you have some sort of um, page that's been framed in the past or whatever reason, you can simply uh, give a value to content URL and then we'll go in and render that page within the content of that tab. So now let's run this so we can see what it looks like so far. And you notice we have our three tabs, but the text here is squished right up against the image. And it just looks kind of, I don't know, it looks crowded and I don't really like it. So what we want to do is add some space in there. Now, some of you might be thinking that you want to add in some NBSP entities, HTML entities, just to add some space there, and that's, that's not the best way to handle it. So I want to show you the best way to handle it. In Internet Explorer, I'm pressing F12, and I'm just opening up the developer tools. And so what I want to do is go through the markup and see which one of the elements has that, that text in there, 
And then we can go into the style sheet and see what we need to change in order to add maybe some padding to the element that has the text in it. So if we come down here to the tab control and just open this up until we find what we're looking for. Here we go. We've made it, came down through the nested spans and we found the text for tab one. Now what's nice is that when I click on the text for that span, over on this other pane here, it brings up the style sheet and then we can see where or how all the styles are applied to this element. Now if you'll notice that there's this class here that's applied to it, the IG tab underscore THT text. Really all I want to do, and, and that's being applied to a span, which you can see right in here, THT text being applied to a span. I want to change some of the properties of that span in order to move the text over. So knowing that, let's update the style sheet in order to give us some of that margin. So here we are back in the markup and at the top of the page I added in a style block here. And so we found the class that we were looking for, igtab underscore tht or th text, and all we needed to do is add margin left about five pixels. So now when we run the page, we should get a nice, nice space there away from the icon so that uh, it looks much, much better. So there you go. There's a basic introduction in working with a new control, the web tab. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.